you have joined us today. We have such an exciting lesson. We are on week two of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How many of you have ever watched a superhero movie and you wish that you could have some superpowers? Well, we're not gonna talk about superpowers today, but we are going to talk about supernatural powers that we really can have that Jesus gives us. Before we get into our lesson, let's open up with a word of prayer. Would you bow your head, close your eyes, fold your hands. Let's talk to God. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that you're always with us. I thank you that you bless us and that you take care of us. I ask that you would help us to learn what you want us to learn today. Help the teaching to um, help us to understand it with our ears to get into our mind and to sink into our hearts that we would begin to put it into practice. Thank you, Father God, that you have given us the gifts of the Spirit to help us do what you have called us to do. We love you, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, this is an exciting lesson. And watch our big idea real quick. So our big idea is I want the Holy Spirit and we start up in heaven and we bring it down to our heart because the Holy Spirit comes into our heart. The Holy Spirit whoosh, to fill me with power. So we're just going to fill me with power. Actually, maybe we would just say fill me. So we're filling up with power. Let's try that again. I want the Holy Spirit whoosh, to fill me with power. Let's do that all together one more time. Come on, everybody stand up, we can do it together. So I want the Holy Spirit to fill me with power. That is awesome, that's what I want. I hope that that is also what you want. Let's start off today with the game. Are you ready to play?
joining Pastor Robin today in Charlotte, Michigan, as she shares our message with us today. So go grab your Bibles. I'm going to give you to the count of three. Got to do it really quick today. One, two, three. I hope you have your Bible. Sit up straight and tall and listen as Pastor Robin shares our lesson today. I think you guys are going to love today's lesson. I have something amazing to tell you, but let's just jump right in. You know, as Christians, we face a supernatural enemy. Yeah, it's the devil. And we don't like talking about the devil, but you know what? The devil and his helpers are spirit beings and we cannot beat them without having natural weapons. And we're going to talk about those weapons today, but let's go ahead and turn to Ephesians 6. Can anybody shout out where Ephesians is? Is it in the old or the new? You guys are so good. That's right. It's in the New Testament and it's pretty much way in the back. So go ahead, turn to Ephesians 6 and we're going to read verses 10 through 12. Okay. I'll give you a minute. I'll get you a minute to find it. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12. We're talking about weapons here. I know some of you guys like to play with toy guns and, and uh, swords and that kind of thing, but these are going to be spiritual weapons and they're really cool. Here we go. Let's see what it says. Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 12. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You know, the devil is a spirit. We can't see him, but we do know that he's here. And you know what? He causes a whole lot of trouble. Yep. He plays with our mind. He gets us to try to do things that we shouldn't do. He tempts us with all kinds of different things. You know, like when we get angry and we just want to throw something, the devil's whispering, go ahead, do it, do it. But you know what else the Bible does? He binds us with all kinds of things. I have, I have a friend, her name is Jen, and she's gonna help, help me show you what I mean by this. Jen, come on out. How are you today? I'm good, I'm you're, good. You're kind of all wrapped up in chains here. You, you're kind of like, you can't run around and do too many things. No. What, what, you're kind of bound up with fear and bad, ha ooh, like lying bad habit. Yeah. Death. Oh, you know what? Death doesn't have to just be our physical death. It could be like spiritual death. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sin. Uh-oh. Some of us disobey our parents and that's a sin. Fear is a sin? Oh my goodness. And we get, we really get bound with fear. You know, when I was little, I wouldn't even get out of my bed because I was afraid of the dark. Mm -hmm. I know. That was bad. And sickness. Oh, many of us know people that are sick. And then yeah. addictions as well. Now, most people and kids your age aren't addicted to drugs or alcohol. But you know what? You could be addicted to um, video games. You could be addicted to TV or those types of addictions. So we can have all of those addictions. But you know what? Jesus, when he lived here on earth, he set people free by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to read to you Acts 10, Acts 10, 38. So can you guys, it's a little bit before Ephesians, still in the New Testament, Acts 10, 38. Let me read this to you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Wow, Jesus had the power because of the Holy Spirit that was within him. And you know what? There's a word in the Bible from the Greek and it is called dunamis. And there was a guy who invented some, something. His name was Alfred Noble. He inv invented something and he actually used dunamis to name it. Can any of you guys think of what that could possibly be? <laughs> that's right, dynamite. And that's how we get the word dynamite, dynamite from dunamis, which actually means power. And it's the supernatural works 
that we get through the Holy Spirit that sets people free. He gave us, or actually, let me start, start back a little bit. Jesus had seven of these sticks of dynamite. Let me show you what I mean. These are the seven sticks of dynamite. I'm not going to blow you up, Miss Jen. Not yet. But here we go. We have the gifts of healing. That's kind of cool. We have works of miracles. Whoa. These are really cool dynamites. They could cause a lot of damage. Words of wisdom. Not damage to us, but damage to the enemy. Prophecy. Gifts of faith. We got, what else here? Words of knowledge. Oh, this one's just an extra bonus. And then we have discerning of spirits. So when Jesus lived here on earth, he had all of these sticks of dynamite. And they helped him to defeat the enemy. But you know what? When Jesus went to heaven, he sent us the Holy Spirit. And he gave us the same supernatural power plus two more but let me read with you in acts 1 8 can you guys grab your bibles i'm going to grab mine right here turn with me to acts 1 8 and here we go we're going to read this it's just a little bit of in front of where we just read and it is here we go but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem and in all judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth you know what that includes all of us we can have this power in our lives to defeat the enemy and you know what we talk about this around the day of pentecost and we celebrate that in may but it, it talks about how Jesus filled the, the disciples with the Holy Spirit. And they received nine sticks of dynamite. Let me read that to you. It's uh, uh, Acts 2, 1 through 4. You ready for this? It's on the same page in my Bible. Uh, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Ooh, but they weren't burned. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And as believers, once we ask Jesus into our lives, he gifts us with the gifts of the Spirit. Now, look at what happens See, now that we are believers, we even have the tongues and we have the interpretation of tongues. But what happens when you take these dynamite, the power that the Holy Spirit has given you, and you attack the chains and the bonds that hold you captive, look what happens. They break free. The gifts of the Holy Spirit destroy the work of Satan and help to set us free. You know what, Miss Jen? I'm just going to go over these nine gifts of the Spirit with you just a minute. But in the next couple weeks, we're going to talk about all of these a little bit more. So we have the interpretation of tongues. That means when God talks through us, to, through us in a different language, we can interpret it. Can you hold that? Awesome. And then we have tongues, which I kind of got in front in, ahead of myself. But when the Holy Spirit came upon those disciples, they started speaking in other languages, which we call tongues. It's a way to talk to God so nobody else can hear. It's like a secret language. It's kind of cool. Isn't that cool? I like that one. And then we have prophecy. God can tell us to go and talk to somebody and tell them what God is saying to them specifically. It's kind of cool, like Ooh. telling somebody a movie at the ending of the movie before it even happens. Love it. Do you love it? Yes. Discerning of spirits. This one's a little bit more difficult to understand, but it's really kind of cool. Kind of helps us tell like good from bad. Ooh. That's a good one when you're picking friends. Words of knowledge. Words of knowledge help us to know things that maybe we shouldn't always know, but we get this knowledge from heaven. 
Then we have words of wisdom. Words of wisdom is also from heaven, and it helps us to be wise and give people good dire direction. Again, we're going to go into these a little bit more detail in the next coming week. We're going to talk about all of this dynamite. Gifts of healing. How many of you have prayed for somebody who's been sick? God is a mighty, powerful, miracle-working God, and he wants to heal the sick. Working of miracles. Now, miracle is something that cannot physically, in the physical, happen. It's just something that, like, God performs. Um, I actually had a miracle in my life, and I'll probably tell you about it in a couple weeks. But a miracle, it would be like, I can't lift a car. But if somebody got trapped under a car, God could give me the strength to lift up that car to get that person out. That would be a miracle, right? Yeah, that would be a miracle. And guess what? This last one, we need this to be able to use all of these sticks of dynamite. The gift of faith. And I don't know if you noticed this, but all of them say gifts. These are gifts that our Heavenly Father has given us through the Holy Spirit. And any of us can open up these gifts and use them. I don't know about you, but I want to have the power of the Holy Spirit in my life to set me free from all the bondages. Uh, that makes me so excited. I want to stand up in worship. How about you? Down, cause I'm not.
yo, yo, this is DJ Praise Z, and I want everyone to make some noise and praise the Lord together. Uh, here we go. Gonna, gonna shine my light. Yeah. Gonna make the whole world bright with the love, the love, y'all, of my King, of my King. Gonna shine yeah. my light. Uh-huh. Gonna make the whole world bright uh-huh. with the love, the love, y'all, of my King. Yeah, take it to the bridge. Straight from the word, y'all. If I get a crown, I'm gonna lay it down at the feet. I'm gonna lay it down of my king. Yeah, I'm gonna give it up. If I get a crown, I'm gonna lay it down at the feet. Yeah, I'm gonna lay it down of my king. Uh, t- take it to the bridge. Well, all the heat. last week so we're gonna go over it twice and then we are going to take some words away see if you can continue to say it so let's go over it all together can you say it with me but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit whoosh, comes upon you that's found in Acts 1 dot dot 8 this is sign language for 8 or you could do 8 all right let's say it all together again but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit whoosh, comes upon you. Acts 1 dot dot 8. All right. Now, since we're talking about power and dynamite and all this stuff, we're going to just blow up some words. So we're going to say the whole verse together, but I am not going to say the words that are missing. I want you guys to say the words that are missing. But say it with me all together. So you can say the whole verse. I'm just going to stop talking with the missing words. Are you ready? Okay. Let's blow it up. But you receive when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's found in Acts 1 dot dot 8. Okay, you ready to blow up some more words? Okay. Let's blow it up. Okay. Still. But you receive the Holy Spirit 
upon you. Acts 1 dot dot 8. Good job. Let's keep going. See if you can say it with some more words blown up. But you receive the upon Acts 1 dot dot 8. Uh-oh, you need to start it this time. The upon Acts 1 dot dot 8. Okay, I'm just going to take the whole thing away. Let's see if you can say the entire verse. Are you ready? Great job. You guys are amazing. Let's put it back up and let's say it all together one more time. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit whoosh, comes upon you. Acts 1 dot dot 8. Amazing job, guys. Hey, Top Dog, what's the matter? You seem really chipper today. Whoa, what do you mean you've been building yourself up? Oh, you've been barking in other tongues? Wait, wait a minute. Did you say barking in other tongues? Uh, he said, humans speak in tongues, but he's a dog, so he barks in other tongues. Well, I guess that makes sense. Now let me ask you something. Why are you doing that? <laughs> oh, he says that in Acts 1-8, Jesus said we would receive power when the Holy Spirit came on us. <laughs> he said, barking in tongues causes the power of God to change up the spirit on the dog inside. <laughs> he said he, he tries to bark in tongues every day. Well, well, that's good, Top Dog. I'm really proud of you. <laughs> you know, Top Dog, barking in tongues gives you, um, you know, the place where God can work in you, like with the nine gifts of the spirit. <laughs> Oh, you haven't heard about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Oh, yes. You see, the power of the Holy Spirit is manifested to help others in ministry by nine different gifts. Well, I can tell you what they are. Uh, let's see, there's words of wisdom. Well, the word of wisdom is the Holy Spirit speaking to you about things that will happen in the future. <laughs> and then there's the word of knowledge. <laughs> yes, there's more. Let's see, there's the gift of faith. <laughs> yes, I know. We all have the gift of faith, but the gift of faith is a supernatural faith that you receive to do extraordinary deeds for God. You know, like the story of the fiery furnace. <laughs> That's right. That means there are many different power, powerful ways God can supernaturally heal. Yeah, gifts of healing are one of them. Well, number five is the working of miracles. That's when God uses someone to work a miracle. You know, like, sort of like Elisha in the Old Testament. <laughs> yes, he was a very powerful prophet. Number six uh, would be the gift of prophecy. <laughs> That's when the Lord has someone speak as inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know, you can prophesy to yourself. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, and then there is also the discerning of spirits. Well, that allows us to see into the realm of the spirit and determine good or evil. No, it doesn't mean you can see evil. 
It just means it can help guide you. Ruh, 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 ruh. And the last two go together. Gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Ruh, 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 ruh. Yeah, that's exactly what you were talking about when we first met up today. Whoa, this is going to be a really great series, and I like the gifts. How about you? Ruff, 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 ruff. Dr. Stevens, Dr. Stevens, yes, said Dr. Stevens. As a technician walked towards here, there's a life flight on its way with a Caucasian male, 35, in the throes of a heart attack. Oh my goodness, that's young for a heart attack. Yeah, the flight will get here in 10 minutes. Melanie said, put him in unit nine and let me know as soon as he gets here. And the technician walked away, said, will do, Dr. Stevens. Melanie continued to write a prescription for a young boy that she had just seen with an ear infection. She finished writing the prescription and she walked into the, the, um, uh, in the room and she said, here's the prescription, but next time, don't wait so long to bring him in. This could have gotten really out of control and it would have been a lot worse. The mom looked up at Dr. Stevens and said, Doctor, we would have been here a lot sooner, but we were having issues with money and I didn't know how to pay for it. Dr. Stevens looked at her and said, you know what? Right down the street is a um, urgent care and it's a lot cheaper than an emergency room. Next time, take, take them there. And the mom said, sure, I will. Compassion welled up in Dr. Stevens and she looked at the mom and she said, could I, could I pray for him? And the mom said, sure, you could pray for him. So Melanie put her hand on the little boy and she prayed and said, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the pain from this ear infection would be gone by his mighty works. God, you said on the cross, by my stripes, you are healed. So Father, we're claiming this healing for this young boy. In Jesus' name, amen. Right away, the little boy had this puzzled look on his face and the mom said, son, what's the matter? Mom, I don't have any pain. You don't have any pain? The mom looked up at Dr. Stevens and said, you're a miracle worker. You just healed my son. And Melanie said, no, it wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit inside of me. God healed your son. And you know what? Because God healed your son, you're not going to need this prescription. And you know what else? I'm not going to charge you for this, this hospital visit. I'm just going to let you go. And just remember that God is good. Right about then, the technician came running in and said, Dr. Stevens, Dr. Stevens, we need you. Flight fight is here right now. And so Dr. Steven went running into the ER and they had the man on the, the table and they were hooking up the, uh, all of the uh, EK, EKGs and everything. And right as she walked into the room, it went beep, he flatlined. So Dr. Melanie said, give me the defibrillator right now. And she said, clear. And she put the defibrillator on the, young, the man and he jumped off the table still. Beep. The attitude in the room kind of got somber and they were all looking around like, what should we do? And Melanie said, one more time, clear. And she jumped the man one more time and his body came off the table and still, beep. Melanie looked around and you could just see on the faces of the nurses and the technicians, just the sadness that came into that room. And there was such a heaviness and Melanie was just about ready to call it, call his death. When she felt this urge to walk a little bit closer to the man and she laid her hands on him. The technicians and the nurses at this point were looking around like what in the world is going on? And Melanie, lay her hand on that man and she said, I command life to come back into you. In the name of Jesus, Melanie took her hand off of the man and I'm telling you at this point, 
all of the nurses, all of the te technicians were going, this lady is crazy. But within 30 seconds, they heard beep, 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 beep. The one technician said, we have vitals. We have, he, uh, they didn't know what to say. They were so tongue tied. The man came back to life. Melody was so shocked, so surprised. She didn't really know what to do, but thankful for all that training, she jumped back onto the job, took care of the man, got him stabled. And as she walked out to the waiting room to tell the family what had happened to their husband and father, she found the mom and kids in the waiting room holding hands, praying. And she walked up to them and she said, I have good news. Your husband, your father has made it. And I see that you're Christians. And they said, yes, we've been standing on his word and we have been believing by faith that he would be okay. And Melanie said, well, because you're believers, I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened just a few minutes ago. We actually lost your husband. He flatlined and we tried to bring him back three times to no avail. But as I stepped back, and was about to call the time of death, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me to pray for your husband and your father. And so I was obedient. And because of your faith, while you guys were praying, and my obedience, the Holy Spirit and the power of God brought him back to life. There was a lot of rejoicing that day in General Memorial Hospital. I am so glad that you joined us for this lesson. It is such an important lesson to learn about the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit that Jesus left with us as the church. There are so many gifts. Remember some of the ones that we talked about? Gifts of healing and miracle and discernment, which just means knowing if somebody's intent is good or bad. That is an important one. They're all so important. Miracles and faith and healing, wisdom, knowledge, prophecy. Those are all gifts that you can ask God for. Over the next several weeks, we are going to talk more about what each of the gifts mean and exactly how it works and what exactly it is. And then we're gonna be praying and asking God to fill you with his Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So this week, I challenge you to start to ask God to help you understand the gifts of the Spirit. Start reading about the gifts of the Spirit in the Bible. Learn what they are. Let me pray with you. Would you bow your heads? Father, I thank you that Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit that we can defeat the devil and his helpers by the supernatural gifts of the Spirit. I thank you for all of 
your blessings for us. I thank you that you want to give us the power to overcome the enemy, to be victorious, to live the way Jesus wants us to live and walk in victory and power. Help us this week to do that and to put it into practice. We love you. We thank you and praise you. Amen. Next week, we're going to start talking about some of the different gifts and exactly what they are, so you don't want to miss it. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.